Okay. I call the meeting of the County Board of Selectmen to, go, to order at uh, Monday, January 8th at 7 p.m. Uh, first item on the agenda is minutes of the Tuesday, December 26th meeting. Uh, if you got a chance to look at them, Bob? Yeah, uh, no, uh, I wasn't at that oh, meeting. Oh, that's right, so, you weren't like that. So, so I guess we probably have to hold off and take a majority vote next week on them. I looked at them and they look great, so but John's I wasn't not here. here. So John, yeah, the only one here. Vote next week, yeah. So we'll have to uh, <laughs> set that out of call site for tonight. Bring it up again next week if we could. Yep. Okay. Next item on the agenda is our warrants. So we have a vendor warrant for one hundred one thousand one hundred thirty-seven dollars, a payroll warrant for thirty thousand two hundred ninety-four dollars, and a payroll deduction warrant for twenty-six thousand five hundred seventy dollars. I'll make a motion that we approve the warrants. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, passed. Next item on the agenda is minutes attended by the selectmen. Bob, you want to go first? Uh, I have really nothing. I mean, okay. you know, I went to the holiday party at the uh, at the Conway mm -hmm. Inn. That was great. and uh, yeah. That's about it for me. I was attended a meeting tonight, as a matter of fact, at 5 o'clock at, at the first kickoff meeting for the uh, Frontier Regional Building Renovation Subcommittee. Yeah. And we started to get things formalized as to what direction we're going to head and uh, set uh, meeting schedules for future uh, meetings. And we're going to try to uh, work on this to try to bring it to a proposal vote to the towns, not this fiscally coming up town meeting, but the next year's town meeting. Hmm. There's oh, so okay. much to do and so many things to work on that. A year and a There's half. No way it's going to, going to get put together in that short time. So. Mm -hmm. Sutherland was working on uh, green money, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they could be able to do. We discussed with that. a lot. Well, we have. We've, there's a lot of discussions on different things tonight. Uh, uh, possibly funding things by a bond or not. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, and and shortening the uh, list that they had listed up uh, as far as. Uh, Maybe requiring some of them to be under a maintenance account rather than an actual bond, which you know how we would decide to fund it uh, down the road. It sounds way. as though they haven't had enough maintenance money to do what needed to That's be done right. over That's the right. years. So right. maybe they were unrealistic that way. And we talked a little bit about you know maybe the maintenance money that they're doing spending now isn't quite allocated properly. Oh, okay. And that's. Been over a whole bunch of years, not just new administration and like that. It's been the way it's been happening for a whole bunch of years. So mm -hmm. that's things that we got to discuss in the future. Okay. Next item is citizens' concerns. Uh, do we have any? No. Okay. Oh, before we go any further, I forgot to mention at the beginning that the, this meeting is being televised by Frontier Community Access Television, and uh, for the townspeople's future viewing, uh, and we thank them for doing that. Um, next item is old business is an annual town meeting warrant. Tom, you want to talk about that? Yeah, uh, you got the draft last week, um, and it hasn't changed much uh, up to this week. I do have um, some notes to uh, to share with you, Lisa. Here's a copy of that. Um, for Article 2, Town Committee, Town and Departmental and Committee budgets are in, uh, though the assessors and police items are due to be revised. And I have those. I'll, uh, I want to get through the, the thing at first before, before okay. giving out the, the budget stuff. But uh, 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 the assessors are going to have 24 hours per week for the administrative ins uh, assessor instead of 23. Um, this still says 23 when I'm going to be handing out. This just happened today. Um, it's still so down. So this from, number represents 24? There, there are no numbers uh, on this that, okay. that right, right. Are, are for the current, the old one. current year. Uh, so yeah, that, that number actually is 25 hours per week, as is um, FY17. Mm -hmm. So it was going to go down to 23, now it's only going to go down to 24. Uh, some of that has to do with the software conversion that's So the on. only reason this is going to be added is just to decrease it by one hour? Is that the only reason we're adding it to the new warrant? 
Well, it, it, it's a change from what's in what's in the budget that has been submitted. Oh, okay. Um, so there are there so are there, there are many in there. changes. In there was the budget. nothing in the 2017 budget for that item. Uh, no, there was a special article uh, for it, and there's going to be another special article. That's um, that's a little bit later. Okay. Um, but that's um, that's for the uh, the software conversion. Mm -hmm. But uh, just to just to make sure that there's enough staff time available to deal with everything. Okay. They were going to cut it down a couple hours a week. Now it's only down one. Um, four. So more on the budget uh, at the end. Okay. I just want to get through the warrant first. Um, for uh, all of the capital articles, really, three, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I have an email into Dana Goodfield asking if he has set a date yet for the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Haven't heard back. Um, at some point, though, okay. you know, their uh, their report is due in about six weeks or five weeks to to this board, uh, so they should start meeting soon. Um, <clears throat> Article seven. That's capital expenses for the Con Conway Grammar School. Uh, my current understanding is this is the only set of capital items the Conway Grammar School is going to request um, because they have their own financial authority, the school committee, and do their own capital planning with their own stabilization fund. This has not been part of the town's side of capital planning. Uh, so that's it's uh, sort of on its own track, or always has been at least. Uh, and then go through the other capital items, same situation there. For Article 11, um, that's operating expenses for the ambulance department. Over the past few years, there's been some unusual flexibility in how the town has funded the ambulance department and its stabilization fund. Uh, I think we should all try to understand this department's funding and provide more stability going forward. Uh, so I hope that, um, you know, as the Finance Committee starts looking, um, they have a lot of new members as well, and it, I hope we can all get a general understanding of how that works. Right. So so it, when it goes forward, it can be a, you know, a stable, a stable uh, base to plan on. Um, Article 12, I am once again <laughs> proposing that we put on something for funding uh, other post-employment benefits, OPEB, which is really health care for retirees. Now, right now, the town pays 50% of the uh, health care for retirees. And uh, the projections are that health care spending is going to, you know, continue going up until it goes through the roof. And therefore, the town's liability is incredibly large. And for the first time now, that's getting put onto our balance sheets. Um, it's, it's a liability on the town's balance yeah. sheets. So uh, as that happens, um, it will help with creditors when we need to borrow to have a history of investing in these other post-employment benefits, even if we don't put in enough to be on track to fully fund the liability. So again, 10000 a year is not as much as theoretically we should be putting in, but it would be something. Um, and uh, I like to think of it in terms of a, a stabilization fund for retiree health care costs. Having the fund is a good first step. We have the fund, but putting in even $10,000 a year would look better to a bank setting its interest rate for the And that would be town. set in a special account. Yes. For that. Yes, and it can't be used for anything else. Right. Uh, that said, um, if there were a time when we really didn't want to put $10,000 into it, we could spend the money that was in it on the employment benefits, which is part of our operating budget. So that would be another source of revenue for our operating budget. We really don't want to do that. We really want to keep the money that's in there because that's what the banks look at, and they will look at it more now that it's on our actual balance sheet, which is uh, the general accounting <coughs> standards board. How much does that cost a year normally? 
Uh, it's maybe fifty thousand dollars, sort of on that order. Um, we've always done the pay-as-you-go right plan, right? Because relative to a five million dollar budget, fifty thousand dollars is one percent, and given all of the other changes in the town's budget, it's been something that we've just been able to absorb. It's not really that much of a problem for Conway, but that's not how the banks look at it. They, you know, it's as though you said, well, we're going to have to maintain all of our roads for the next 50 years. So that's a liability. We need to we need to pretend that the town has to fund its roads for 50 years into the future. We're never going to do that. That'd be ridiculous. So, why is it the case for health care? I'm not entirely sure, but uh, it has not been part of our budget. Now it's going to be part of our budget, and so I make my annual appeal to stick $10,000 in there. Um, the argument against it is, we're not having any trouble doing pay-as-you-go, why lock this money away and not be able to use it for anything else? And so this is why I only propose ten thousand dollars. But it does look better to banks if we want to borrow. Anyway, do they recommend some way of deciding when to start spending it? No, we we have to fully fund our liability. No, no, I understand. Our, we do, but our total when, liability is over when three million dollars. When do we start taking dollars. money out of this account? But not until it reaches three million dollars. That's for sure. It's only twenty thousand now, so we're not going to get there. Right. <laughs> but that's our liability, you know. And it it doesn't make sense to me that they that that we should fund something a, a liability so far reach. into the future. Yeah, yeah. Where we don't do the same for other town departments, you know, where we also have to invest in real spending every year. Uh, I I I just. A lot of cities got into trouble in the Great Recession because they didn't have enough money to cover their bills. To cover their bills because they'd invested in stocks, mm -hmm. and um, you know, to me, that's just not conservative enough investing. And why should you know small, fiscally responsible towns like Conway have to bear the you know burden? of the mistakes that other people made. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we do. So that's where we are, and it is my duty to propose this, even if um, uh, it's hard to see the need for it. The practical circumstances, it will be on our balance sheet, and banks will look at it when they set interest rates for us to borrow money, rightly or wrongly. Uh, so, moving on, Article 15 is uh, this extra money the assessors are asking for the conversion software conversion project, um, and the assessors want to clarify that this uh, $2,500 may be used for both supplies and staff time. This is all extra work that they don't normally do. It's not part of their regular operating Why budget. Why didn't they incorporate that all into one? But it's it, it's. They wanted to spread it out over two years. So this is the second year of a two-year conversion. Uh, rather than ask for $5,000 last mm -hmm. year, they split it up into two requests for $2,500. Um, Article 16, that's the library amount. We won't get that from the state until... Right. Um, quite some time from now, but it's going to be somewhere around $2,000, $2,500. On the Community Preservation Fund, Article 18, uh, these figures are all set by the assessors based on the tax rate. Uh, in addition to the regular sections of the article, which are appropriating for historic and recreational, that sort of thing, uh, we have a new section uh, E, 
uh, just for this year in order to clear up something on the books. We have a deficit in FY 2013, mm. believe it or not. Uh, we have a deficit of $6,830. Um, How did that ever happen? I think it had to do with funding the church renovation. And some money was taken from uh, historic preservation that should have been taken from general funds. Mm -hmm. um, so the way it was accounted for was that the the amount that was the standard for historic preservation ended up going to the church, but it should have come from the unallocated funds. And so we need to put the money back into the historic preservation fund for 2013 to have our books clean. Hmm. Uh, Did all that $100,000 uh, get put back in there? When the church paid us back there? I believe we have been fully paid. I can check with Jan on that. No, I, I, I know she got the check. She said, I just wanted to... Where, well, where I know we got on? the first check. Right. Um, oh, and I think we got, uh, I think it's been fully paid off. That money goes all back, right back into that same account again? Yes. Okay. Uh, so that's what that section E is about mm -hmm. there. That's the, that's the prior year deficit. Uh, Article 19 is the Mosquito Control District uh, that the, um, a select board uh, member from Deerfield, Carolyn Ness, came up and mm -hmm. told us about. Um, and she thought that uh, grant funds would cover the costs of at least the first year of membership right. and possibly later years. Uh, in, the, in Berkshire County, they have a similar mosquito control district, and some towns left it, which means that the other towns are paying a higher amount. And they're paying um, tens of thousands of dollars to be part of this district. So um, we'll want to keep a very close eye on this item and uh, Make sure that those Especially, like sort I, of questions get asked. That's right, because that's I asked that, you know, because we have compared to the other three towns, we have very limited requirements for control mosquitoes compared to them. Yes. Well, uh, you know the uh, depending on what our percentage is, if we're going to come up with money to start funding the thing. You know? Their uh, their goal is to have a large inclusive well, I, district I where everybody that. pays a little bit and. And we all get the full benefits of being part of the district. So we do have, we just have to clarify that, I think, at town meeting. And, you know, make sure that um, people are there who can answer these questions. I don't think she left here thinking we were going to pay, like, the same amount of money as Deerfield. I would hope not. Right. Yeah. And oh, Bear's watching. Yeah. And yeah. the, uh, you know, the governance of the district is set up. Mm -hmm in advance, and uh, I know that her goal was to have a small executive body um, rather than have every town have a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was more manageable. And then the question would be, well, in that kind of a setting, can we, do we have enough lobbying power to say, you know, we're a smaller town, we want to pay a smaller proportion for the uh, service. Uh, for Articles 20 and 21, uh, I had mentioned this earlier to say if we set up a revolving fund that had for, ma for grant matches, we wouldn't have to use emergency reserve fund money, we wouldn't have to approve it at a special town meeting as we did this year. So, um... Again, it just for the town match, <coughs> um, and then the next article starts it off with ten thousand dollars. It stays in it until it gets used. Obviously, right. if you don't get the grant, you don't have right. to pay the match. Exactly. And if there if there are serious matches, like uh, if we get the FEMA grant for Delaware mm -hmm. Avenue, 
uh, that's going to be more than a $10,000 match. That'll have to go to a special town meeting anyway. So this is really meant for uh, smaller ones, like the... Um, uh, we asked for $15,000. We should hear back in the next week or two, actually, from the Mass Office on Discrimination on fixing up the bathroom in the town hall. Mm -hmm. um, that required us to put up $6,000 to their 9000 to get a total of 15000 So, you know, that's the sort of order of magnitude grant that, that this is intended to, to cover. So I'm proposing that, and you can you know, debate that um, as we go on. I'm also uh, proposing in Article 22 to get on our books that if we have a marijuana establishment in town, we're going to tax it 3%, which is the maximum we can tax it, of its gross sales, uh, mm -hmm. so that we have that on our books. Um, it says nothing about whether we want it or not. It has, says right. nothing about where it can go or not. It just says if you're here, you're pay we, we, we want we want the maximum tax right. money. Thank you. So I think that's uh, I think that's prudent. But uh, Article 23, I put on here. It came up actually before the special town meeting, um, and I think I need to expand. I'm actually going to write this down. Expand the quoted language, because it really doesn't get the point across what's in here. Right, it doesn't. Um, what it says is that before a town meeting, before a warrant um, uh, closes, we need at least 60 days mm -hmm. um, before the, the town meeting. And, you know, it was intended for the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. That you know, that's well, why that's questions. why this, this warrant will close sixty days before the Nothing's ever said annual about town meeting. Mm -hmm. But at a special town meeting, you, you might call that, you know, and say we're gonna have it in a month. So if we need to have a special town meeting, it doesn't work for the special town meeting. So this would just clarify that that language is in fact for the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. So someone was asking at the special town meeting don't you have to, you know, close the warrant 60 days in advance? So, um, good to clarify that, I think. Um, Article 24. Um, in, the, uh, in the rush to get that um, grant proposal in, uh, you very kindly... Uh, uh, voted in a commission on disability, but there is a particular process that has to be used for that to be valid for state purposes, uh, which involves a town meeting vote. It also involves having five members and meeting on a monthly basis. Were we set aside three at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's, there's, there would be some ramping up to do yep. for that. The point is that that gives us more leverage when we submit a grant proposal. So if we were to ask for a lift at the town hall, we would be in a better position to get the money, you know, big money, mm -hmm. $100,000 instead of, you know, $15,000. We'd be in a better position if we had it. So that's, uh, that's why I put that on. And that's, that's uh, you know, cites the chapter and section. Mm -hmm. Um, for that. Then, uh, you know, I, I keep talking about the need to codify the bylaws, um, and I get into a lot of conversations with Ginny about it, too. They're really in no particular order. They're not numbered. It's hard to refer to them mm -hmm. if you want to change them. So uh, Article 25 is something that a lot of towns have done mm. something similar. So I, you know, asked around and got some, you know, language that other towns had used and came up with this um, that says the town clerk shall be authorized to assign appropriate numbers or letters 
to sections, subsections, paragraphs, and subparagraphs, to town general and zoning bylaws where none are approved by town meeting. Um, and then if it is approved by town meeting, then um, the town clerk can make non-substantive editorial revisions to ensure consistent and appropriate sequencing, organization, and numbering or lettering of the bylaws. That means if you say, we want this to be a new section, the clerk can stick a number on it and renumber all the other parts. Mm -hmm. It's pretty basic stuff, but it's really important because the bylaws are like the constitution of the town. <coughs> You know, so you want it to be very clear what the town clerk is empowered to do and not empowered to do. Really, it's sticking numbers and letters on everything to make it clearer what goes where. Now, what I would hope is that I would work with Jenny to do that, and then we would bring a revised version back to town meeting and say, here's what we meant let's have town meeting approve these new bylaws which haven't changed substantively it's only the re reorganizing of them so everybody gets a chance to see it and, and there's say, no state funding for that this feels like one of those markarian kind of projects yeah. it's Ooh. really it's really simpler than that it it's is. really okay. just sticking you know once yeah it's nice and, th and there are some towns that the state points to that says hey you know look at their bylaws they did it really well. I see. Okay, good. You know, so you get a 100 series and a 200 series and a 300 series. Yeah. And so we might not have anything in our 300 series because that's something that we haven't found the need to make any bylaws about. So, but but we might want to reserve it in case, it, you know. So, so we don't have to change all of the numbers every time mm -hmm. something comes in. Right. Or you know, what we've been doing is just throwing things on the back. Oh sure. And just pile them up in the, in the back of the book. Yeah, yeah uh, we, we also don't refer to... Um, tough to look something up that way. An, another thing I want to do is to make sure that we, we include the list of all of the state laws that we've accepted, we've adopted for the town, which is now not part of the bylaws, Ooh. but really should be. It should be an appendix to the bylaws that says, you know, Conway, uh, on this uh, Commission on Disability, you know, Conway approved this this chapter, this section, establishing a commission on disability on this date. We have dozens of examples of that that are just sort of floating around. They're not attached to the bylaws. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a different kind of change, but it, just to let you know, I've been thinking a lot about making mm -hmm. things clear so everybody knows what the town has decided in the past. It'll be a tough one for Sometimes people to feel comfortable with. Some people don't remember yeah. that the town approved this in the past, or are surprised, or, you know, really? The time changes so fast. I mean, everything. I mean, you know, so it, it's well, good. Committees all change. Ultimately, I'd like to see a bylaw revision committee. Uh, but this isn't that. This is just putting numbers and letters on things. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and, and if you stick one in the middle, you change all the subsequent numbers right. or letters. You know, that's what that's for. Uh, Article 26 is saying that if you trim or cut or remove public trees, you're subject to a fine. Um, so, because it's really our uh, tree warden who should be doing that, mm -hmm. and um, there are any number of reasons that's the case. There's liability, there's permission, there's... Uh, you know, planning, uh, you know. Um, so I'm working with Walter on uh, on what that might look like. Um, he's going to come in sometime this week. We're going to talk about it. Because I don't, I don't have any um, real language for that yet. Uh, I thought I'd throw this idea out. I know it got proposed before at one point, but um, you know, we've, um, we've been revising the town report. Um, we had some complaints that the, le that the lettering was too small, so we bumped up the lettering. Well, that added a few pages. 
we are now including the complete record of the town meetings that happened during that fiscal year, which is something we should have been doing all along. So that added a few pages to it. So it's a much, I think, much more complete document, much easier to work through. But we have the requirement that we mail it to everybody. It costs somewhere between four and five thousand dollars to do that now, every year, um, and that's without a glossy cover photo. So, I thought I'd throw that out there. I might. I, I'm not at all really attached to it at this point, but I wanted to bring it up as something. And what would we do instead of mailing it? Um, there would be maybe a hundred copies printed. And put it up on the website because by the time this thing passes everybody except you know six whatever I would think if you're going to try to have access I would think if we're going to try to attempt to get the townspeople to vote for this that there should be some language in here that says that a letter the first year of the issuance of this a letter will be sent out to all town residents, like you would normally do the town report, Tell them asking them yeah. to, if they would like a hard copy, to either fill the paperwork out or notify the yeah. assessors that they want a hard copy. And yeah. they can come here and get one. Uh, they, or they could come here and get one, or you could mail them one. Yeah. It, it would be nice to know how many that people That might go over a little bit easier with a customer yeah, yeah. saying, you're not going to get it anymore. Right, right, right. Or download it. Or download it. Because... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking of the elderly people in this community. Yeah, yeah. We don't have a, a lot of elderly left, but we got, we got a few. And they may not even have a computer in their house. And they always like to look at that. Um, yeah, um, I really don't know. So they should um, have the option in front of them that yeah. they can actually read and say, well, if I just call this number or fill out this paperwork and mail it back to the town administrator, uh, they'll send me my free copy. Yeah, and you know what? We could budget the whole amount and send that letter out to everybody. For the first year. And then, then we'd you know how many to print. The next year, how many to print. And of course we print some extra because new people come into town, oh, yes. people oh. ask for it. We have I just to, think that would be a good idea. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's good. No, this is exactly the kind of discussion I want because, you know, one of the... I know that... It may never fly, but I mean, it's, um, it's worth a try. So is it possible to move it off of legal-sized paper? It's not on It's not on legal-sized legal paper. paper. The town report. Oh, town the town report. report. Not, not the, the town warrant. Report. Town report. This no, no. Yeah, okay, yeah, the town report has really grown, yeah. yeah. I, I am totally in yeah, favor you're right. of the That came out on 8 by 11 paper, yeah. 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 That's right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it used to be a small. Used to be a small thing, and, small thing. and the old, the really old ones have really small print. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. and you know, so that's we've we've been we've been changing it, but it's made it more expensive. And I and I've been a kind of of two right. minds about right. that. I think it's a better document, but it's also a more expensive document. And I just wanted to check in, and you know, maybe maybe it's best to take this off for now, and just talk about how we might do it in the future. I think that idea is really good about sending people a letter and saying, you know, asking them if they want a hard copy. They, you know, order your town report. Here, here's the order form. You want it? We'll, we'll do it for no, you. No, I mean, it, if, if the townspeople vote, put this, leave this on there, and if the townspeople vote, yes, we're going to save $5,000 by not doing it. Have something in wording right there that says, but the very first year we'll send every town resident a letter asking them if they still would like a hard copy. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd send it to them every year. I mean, somebody might want it one year, might not want it the next year. Uh, that, but that's not going to cost. Well, that's cost. I really wonder bucks. how many hard copies go out through our citizens in county, and they got right. from the mailbox right to some corner cabinet in their house, and never even get looked at. Well, that is something that I was told when I got here is that at the post office sometimes has to deal with a lot of copies mm -hmm. that people leave there. Mm. Um, so so this would clarify that, I think, by I, asking that. I just, yeah, oh, well, that that's fine. Um, I um, I don't want people, I want people to have the information. Right. Sure. We're not trying to exclude yeah. them from yeah. any information. Yeah. But it's a... We're trying to save the town some costs. It's a huge job to do um, as well for the staff. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of time. No, I don't. 
it um and you know thank god we're, we're paying all, for we, is it state law that do you have to do this no no it's in it's only conway bylaw it's only a conway bylaw does other towns not yeah. send out town reports i don't know any that do hmm? you don't know any that do hmm? yeah um usually copies are made up they're at the town town hall and People can't. Well, come that should in be expressed in here then. That the state lives does not require that we have to do it. Yeah, that would be a, that would be a, a discussion during after the motion. Yep. Um, I think there there are there are reasons for not doing it, but you know, part of me doesn't want to take away anything that is going to let people know what's going on, because a lot of good stuff goes on. You know, we, we, we still have the video from the all committee meeting up on the We know the how hard it is for you people to pull from the department heads. <laughs> pull teeth out of their head to get it and submit a report. Mm -hmm. Well, it's Because none of the department heads, and I'm one of them, I'll speak for myself only, hate to do it. Mm -hmm. And you write a good one. No, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, you have exactly the facts and figures you ought to have, and nothing more and nothing less. It's a great report. We still have to. We still have to do the report, right. and we we have to send a copy to to, uh, to Boston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's a question of making, you know, fifteen hundred of them yeah. or seven hundred of them and sending them out. I'll yeah. bet if you could send out a, a one-page letter to everybody in the town of County. You probably wouldn't, like you said, you probably wouldn't get a request back for even 100 of them. And how many did you send out? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, 800. I mean, yeah, we'd send out 800 out. Yeah. That would be my guess. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so. It's worth And, and it's you worth know, that, 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 would, that would cut it down to $500. I think it's worth doing. You know, instead yeah. of 4 We're not four cutting anybody off from not getting it. We're just right. asking that we make changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Good. So, Next all one. right. Good article. Uh, articles 29 and 30, uh, 28 and 29 it is, rather, on here. I gave the two, two wrong numbers there. The planning board articles. Um, I understand they're going to have something on large scales construction. <clears throat> that's saying if anybody's doing something really, really big. Oh, that's on the marijuana, right? They, they ha um, that's actually a remnant of the pipeline. Oh, that's okay. <clears throat> and it's it's just if you're going to do huge construction, you got to no. work with the town. And then then there's the marijuana one, um, which I expect, but I don't have it, you know, at this point. Um, and I have to make sure that they know. I, I, I'm pretty sure they know um, what uh, your deadline is, what, mm. um, because they're going to have to, you know, really gear up over the next couple of months to get that, yeah. to make that happen. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they may also have. Oh, that's coming later. Yes, of course, there may be additional warrant articles as well. Right. We've just opened the warrant. Uh, for example, I understand the Wastewater Committee may want to bring a design article to town meeting, you know, to fund the design of the thing so that we know how much it would cost. Uh, I'm going to be talking with Joe about that tomorrow morning. Um, we have a preliminary report. Um, it's not a final draft, but it's a preliminary draft. And so he wants to know how to go about that. And, you know, in a perfect world, um, you know, even the design stage, I think, should be part of capital planning. But it's not a capital project per se. That would be when you actually went to build it. So he's not on their timeline. But again, I, I don't know that they've had any meetings yet. So their deadline passed, but if they haven't, had any meetings, I don't know that it, it's yeah. that much of a burden for them to look at something else if they wanted to. Um, again, this is a design um, proposal. For money, for the design. Yeah. And the design would tell us how much it would cost to do the project. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, a lot of people think it 
the town isn't interested in providing more capacity for the downtown. I um, think he's got. So I, maybe I'll they say will go to town. The day I die, I think he's got one tough sale there. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, and this would I be. Just, I just hope it's not. We're not wasting our town money in the process. Well, this this would be the um, the vote in which people yeah. express that. Exactly. Uh, then, hey. then there's that uh, the safe, safe community. community. Yeah. Yeah, safe uh, community one. Yeah. So now I promised, and I am delivering. Um, a draft which has a whole lot of holes in it in the first two paragraphs. The budget. But gets much better after that. <laughs> um, so this has all of the general government and public safety and public works, uh, which is at the very end, the last two pages basically, um, budgets for the town. Now, a couple of disclaimers here. Um, of course, this does not include the um, any salary uh, hikes. It, it, there is a, a bit in here about the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments, for which we have no information yet, um, that's still under general government. Um, and for police, and I don't know, maybe the fire department and the ambulance department may want to make a revision. Apparently, there's a new radio system, which is going to require much more expensive radios. Um, and what I've, um, I just kind of arbitrarily, Ken says these radios are $750 a piece something like that. They're pretty expensive. Um, I put in an extra $3,000 under radio fees from last year. Um, everything else in the police department is level funded. Um, but that's why... Police, that police another $3,000 for radios for, for what reason? Uh, there's a new radio system and with a new, a new band and it hasn't gone into effect yet. Well, it's, it's projected not to take place for five years. Five years. Well, I will, well, I was told. I will talk to Ken about that. Because they anyway. just did a survey for the needs. We just com completed the needs. Uh, I shouldn't call it needs assessment. We just completed the assessment uh, paperwork, all the requirements for the radio system as to where our weak points in our communities were. Mm, okay. And it came back to the radio, Franklin County Radio Committee, uh, and there's a lot more loopholes in the county than they thought there was. Mm. Mm. Where yeah. Got very poor or no reception. Mm hmm Which takes and increases that dollar amount tremendously. Oh, yeah. And we're trying to get uh, through the Department of Public Safety, I believe, is, and through the state police, of course, to come up with some funding grant like they did last time. Mm -hmm. So this. There's a lot of work ahead of them still. A lot of work. Okay. Uh, so you stuck it, 2000 it, in, the, it, in the fire radio fees, too. That's, yeah. the same thing? Yes. No. No, no, that's oh. not. That, uh, Bob had, Bob had oh. something different. Okay. I, I, okay. okay. The only reason I mentioned that was that's the one number under the police yeah. that went up, and yeah. that's why I put it up. I didn't even ask Ken about the $3,000, but I had talked with him about multiple radios costing close to a thousand dollars. Oh, they're big, big so. money. But. Anyway, that, that's why that <coughs> number is that way. So um, I'm also going to give this particular document out to the Finance Committee. It's not cast in stone. And again, um, the assessors are right on the, right on the second page. <coughs> this is before we have um, cut that down to 24 hours for the um, administrative asset, uh, assessment. Yeah, on, on the third page, there's a little box, mm -hmm. and it shows the administrative assessor at 23 hours a week. Mm -hmm. That's going to go up to 24 hours a week, so that's going to change those totals. Um, but that's the only change. So really, 
the assessor's number, the police number, and the council of government's numbers are the only ones that I don't think are good at this point with the further disclaimer that it doesn't have any salary adjustments. Well, we're not <coughs> sure. Can, can the police department and the fire department budgets, again, we projected an increase in the radio fees <coughs> of operations, mm -hmm. and we have yet to see what that figure is. Yeah. I always send them out late, right mm -hmm. around just before our time. Yeah, yeah. Our print oh, I know. time. So we, I know. We, we don't know what that's going to do this year. Well, we all have to scramble for that. We all that. have to scramble for that one. So um, to get back to the fire department budget, one quick question yeah. for you. Uh, there's two different items on, on in the end that I want to talk about. Where in the budget has the dollar amount been put for the fire truck uh, yearly cost for the new truck? That's under uh, debt, um, which is 900 Does something. Does that have to get voted every year? Let's see, is that actually in here? I like think, we did yeah. last year? That's in here. Did we vote oh. last, late last year because we forgot to do it? Yeah. Is that? It's, um, it's uh, about halfway, a little over halfway through. Debt service, town insurance, and employee benefits on the bottom of the right-hand page. What page? Oh. It's, it's after town clerk and elections. Mm -hmm. I didn't put well, page numbers on this, unfortunately. Yeah. Where are we here, Tom? No, that's what Four it looks Four pages like. in or so? No, it's more than that. Oh, there it is. I got it. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yep, okay. I just want to make sure it's in there. Yes. <laughs> the other item is, and, and I don't know if you yeah. know this or not, and I only heard this through town discussions out the street. <coughs> I understand <coughs> the Christmas tree lighting. The lights are Christmas tree out here. Yes. It needs to be totally replaced this next year. <coughs> mm -hmm. At an estimate of between seven and eight hundred dollars. And I mm -hmm. understand there's only three hundred and some odd dollars in that tree account. Is he, has the gentleman that does that come in and ask for any more money for lighting for this next year? No. Uh, you may want to call David McDonald. Yeah. He's the gentleman that does it. And he's the one that I, I didn't talk to him, I talked to some other people that had talked to him. And that mm -hmm. was one of his statements today. So you should probably call him and check with him mm -hmm. before we get Because that the tree has grown so much? Yeah, and the lighting is very old. It is, yeah, yeah. But the, it's amazing how quickly that tree has grown. You know, it's the last six or eight feet at the top of the tree is not lit this year because there's uh -huh. no lighting in the door. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So, um, it's growing like crazy, that tree all the It is, yeah. <coughs> Uh, so that's that's the only two What I have for the draft. Great. Okay. Uh, let's see. Open oh, you in discussion of the draft. Do we have to have a vote to open the town meeting warrant? Official vote. Oh, I guess we haven't. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay. I'll make a motion that we open the fiscal year 2019 town meeting warrant. So move. Oh, he moved. Second it. Second. <laughs> All in favor? All right. Okay. That's official. Sorry, we should have done that first. Okay. Uh, new business, I guess. Business license renewals. We have one here for, uh, let me read it to you. A used car dealer's license, class two, to buy and sell secondhand motor vehicles for James Costigan, uh, J and J Auto Sales on East Guinea Road in Conway. I'll make a motion to approve the license. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No, so John will sign this. John will sign that and put that in the angle. Great. Oh, here. I'm just, uh... <coughs> okay. Yeah. Set a date for the Citizens Caucus, May 5th, 2018, at 8 p.m. Town Hall. I mean, here. March, what did I say, May? Yeah. March, I'm sorry. Might as well get it said right. <laughs> right before right. a town March meeting. <laughs> yeah, right. right before the election. <coughs> I guess did they, you had talked to Jenny, and that sounds like a good day for you people? Or? Yeah, that's what she's suggesting. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the March 5th, 2018, 8 p.m. Uh, town meeting caucus for that night. Second. Second it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we have a select board meeting that night. 
but yes. early. Yes. And the uh, caucus is at 8 p.m., mm -hmm. so you should have plenty of plenty time, time to get through whatever the uh, okay. meeting is then. Next new business item is to discuss the draft marijuana regulations. Yes. Tom, you want to talk on this one, I guess, don't you? Yeah, uh, they are out. I believe I did uh, send you the links to them. Yeah. And a, uh, a brief, you know, what I could find going through them that really affected local governments. A lot of it is not local government related, uh, but I thought I would find things that were and give, you know, some initial thoughts that have been kicking around for a few months. And that's what this list is here? Yeah. Okay. And it's just, just a couple just pages. Just your wheel. I'm sorry? Just cross the review. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just a, a a brief a briefing mm -hmm. on on what I found that was um, of interest to local governments and some potential comments that might be made to the draft. Mm -hmm. Like light pollution. So that was a, a good Yeah. Idea. Yeah, and uh, in my update, which I will give, I will mention that there is gonna be a hearing on Tuesday, February sixth from 10 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. It's a public hearing by the Cannabis Control Commission mm -hmm. to accept public comments mm -hmm. on the regulations. What was the date of that? Uh, Tuesday, February 6th from 10 to 1. Um, and there is a limited amount that the town can do, but there are certainly real actions the town can take, um, controlling light and noise and the size of buildings and all the things that our planning board has been looking at. Uh, and also, I think it would be worthwhile to see whether or not uh, the regulations can contain, just because at the state level it's not treated as a food, or the crop isn't treated as an agricultural product doesn't mean at the local level the Board of Health shouldn't have uh, the ability to inspect the facility to make sure that it's operating according to what is required. They are actually required to meet the state sanitary code. So how is the citizen supposed to be um, assured of that? Mm -hmm. Well, the Board of Health makes an inspection. And if it's not the Board of Health, who would it be? Exactly. Yeah, and, you know. Exactly. That, that is the appropriate body yes, it for is, it. So I think this is, um, this is an appropriate comment to make, and I actually will be preparing comments and plan to go to that session. Mm -hmm. um, because I heard this, I heard, well, we all heard it. You know, mm -hmm. we, we were at the, at the hearing that the planning board had, and um, one of the Board of Health members was, quite shocked to find out that there was not an explicit role right. mm. for the Board of Health in regulating edible products that might be produced in town. So um, I'm, I'm planning to take that perspective to the, uh, to the hearing. Good. Uh, so again, the regs are out. I forwarded the link. I did some initial analysis of the regulation. Um, it's really meant to kickstart other people thinking about it. So um, if anybody else wants to continue this conversation in the select board meeting, let me know. I'll put it on the agenda again until, uh, again, um, the, the uh, deadline for these comments is going to be, there is a deadline. Yeah. Um, and it is going to be, uh, I don't have it here. It's, it, I think it's February 15th. It's it's pr it's pretty quick. They're only offering about a um, five p.m. on February fifteenth. Well, the regulations have to be, you know, distributed on March fifteenth. So. Well, no, well, oh, so oh, on March fifteenth. Well, so that gives them a month. Yes, to would, take in, into account yes. public comment. I mean, it would have to be quite a while before then. But but that that is a short public comment period. That yeah, right. that's about a. Um, five week maybe a six week public comment period I don't know I went I just saw today when it was when it was scheduled for it did come in the end of last week so you know call it a six week comment period but that that's that's still a pretty tight turnaround the whole the whole process is of course going at, at yeah, lightning yeah, yeah. speed yeah. for yeah. for government regulation good
Items anticipated not 48 hours in advance. Can I ask one more question? Oh, sure. So, so in, in the notes here, I mean, one of the things you referenced was that, that, that applicants have to uh, come to the town and do outreach and fill out a host, uh, uh, what's the word for it? Agreement. Uh, a host agreement. And uh, mm -hmm. has anybody approached Conway that we know of? Not that I know of. Um, I do know that there will be a guide uh, put out by the Cannabis Control Commission uh, for towns, uh, but I also know that it has not been written yet. <laughs> so uh, that's something. Uh, I'm but sure that there will be a lot of back and forth on a lot of different email lists about what a good host community mm -hmm. agreement looks like. Yeah. And some of it has to do with uh, negotiating the extra 3% that can be um, required of an operation if it's based on actual costs related to the facility being there. Mm -hmm. That is, mm -hmm. if we say we want to hire an extra cop to make sure that you know there's like really good coverage, um, at least when you're open of your facility, and especially when you're you know. Getting or you know, getting rid of a lot of cash, um, we could charge that through a host agreement to the establishment up to th another three percent of their gross sales. But whatever we agree for that, it has to be a direct cost mm -hmm. of having that establishment here. Um, and my guess is that we would not <clears throat> be able to make up three percent. Of a cost, unless we, you know, did have like a pretty much another full-time uh, police officer on duty. Mm. Um, in which case, we might make up another three percent of the cost, given the operation. Right. Uh, of course, it's different for a production facility than than for a retail facility, and all that. And that's another little bit of difficulty that we're not just talking about a retail facility. We're also talking about a potential cafe, a production facility, a processing facility. Right. Um, there's all a, a, a uh, an outdoor operation, you know, a growing operation. So there's all kinds of things that have to be considered when thinking about the regulations and the and the and the host agreement. So, I I, I do anticipate there will be a lot of back and forth on. What people are including in their host agreements, and and uh, you know, trying to come up with some best practices around that. Great, but it, it seems to me we were looking at the regulations coming out in the middle of March, and then April first, we could get the first applications. Yes, but some of the some of the preliminary work that has to occur before people can apply hasn't been started yet. So. Right, and their application for the license to the state has to include documentation that they have had a public meeting in the town to do public outreach. Right. Mm -hmm. The guidelines for those meetings haven't been written yet, so uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff that's just yeah. going very, very quickly all at the same time. And, of course, Conway passed the moratorium. Right. So we have a little bit more breathing room than communities that have not passed a moratorium. Right. Great. Okay. So, I just to no, look. that's good. I'm glad you asked it. Okay, and items not, and not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Do we have anything? Anybody I have anything? nothing. Okay. Town administrator update. Yeah. Uh, for committee updates, the Agriculture Commission is proposing right to farm roadside signs. You may have seen them in different communities as you come into town. It's you know this is a right to farm community sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, they've made progress on design thanks to the talent and generous donated time of Amy Anderson. They're working on sign locations with the <coughs> highway superintendent and the state. Uh, which have their own requirements about where you can post things on, uh, you know, state highways, and they have estimates for the sign costs and are asking for funds for those in their budget request. You'll you'll see that in the document I I uh, sent out 
uh, I, I just handed out, rather. Uh, and the Board of Assessors is preparing a grant request for IT work through the Community Compact. It's not a best practice. The ones we did before were best practices. This is a separate, dedicated IT grant program, still through the Community Compact. Mm -hmm. um, the deadline is coming up pretty quickly. I think it's next week on that. I'm going to be meeting with Lee Wednesday morning about that. Uh, for departmental news, uh, as you know, departmental and committee budgets are almost all uh, in. Well, they're all in. They're not necessarily in their final format. Uh, there is some delay related to new radio equipment, as you heard, uh, with new radios being much more expensive than the old ones. And the radio fees, as we heard uh, from our fire chief, are also going up um, when we don't know how much. Uh, I'm working with the highway supervisor to ensure the prioritization of clearing access to the South River for fire equipment. Uh, this points to the need for the development of a more follow formal policy for highway support for several non-road town activities, which I've begun to draft. It's really more of a DPW in a small town. You've got to do a lot of different stuff. Um, and of course, roads are, you know, you think are your first priority, and then um, being part of a whole community, um, we also have to deal with that. So I'm trying to come up with an overall uh, policy on that. So access to the South River, that refers to the dam down there? No. Or no. The water hole down there. Script pile and some fault road. Where we get water access. Oh, oh, out to there. there. I see, right oh, there. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We've been, um, been having some problems getting it uh, plowed out in the wintertime. Uh huh. Yeah. In a, in a uh, more timely manner. So we're ensuring the prioritization of that. Um, I have uploaded the emergency procurement policy and some other documents to the FEMA Grants Portal website, which could save time in filing paperwork after an emergency. I'll continue to pre-populate the site as appropriate. It's an amazing amount of uh, bureaucracy to go through to put a, put a few documents up on the web, but um, that's FEMA. That's FEMA. Uh, in other news. Uh, we have received the annual salary survey um, from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments and have a new municipal directory, um, which you can look at. It doesn't, it says basic facts for all the towns. Um, and, oh, I have the, uh, there's the salary survey, too. Uh, are, are they online? Uh, well, I have, uh, I can, I can email, uh, that would be great. I, I can email that. Um, because I did get it as a, uh, I just got it as an electronic file. This actually came in the mail last week uh, as a hard copy. Uh, Berkshire County assessors and administrators are spearheading a six year plan to revalue some utilities. Uh, in hopes of providing better assessed values. Our administrative assessor is our point person on this. They've, they've reached out to Franklin and Hampshire and Hamlin County as well. Uh, as we have spoken of uh, draft regulations implementing the law legalizing marijuana have been released. I have shared some initial thoughts with both you and the planning board, who I expect will look closely at the draft regulations and prepare a bylaw for Conway. Uh, and since I wrote this, the timeline for public comments was set. Uh, and it starts now, and it goes through February 15th at 5 p.m. Uh, and I've also posted on the, that on the website, which also has the uh, email to send public comments to, or if you want to mail them, it has a mailing address as well. Uh, the Massachusetts Municipal Association is proposing three resolutions for the annual meeting, January 18th through 20th. They are written in the latest beacon, and you should have your copies of that. Uh, please review them for deliberation next week so that the town can participate in the vote at the annual meeting. 
Although such motions are expected to pass, there is sometimes a discussion regarding specifics. So um, to have gotten into the form that they are there, they've gone through an amazing process within the Mass Municipal Association. It's absolutely expected that they will pass, but sometimes people do take issue with various right. parts of it because sometimes the cities have a little bit more influence than the towns and sometimes, uh, so it, it, they're not, it's not exactly a rubber stamp. Uh, so I do urge you to look at the um, proposed resolutions. Um, and then I've already mentioned a bit about the public hearing on marijuana regulations. Tuesday, February 6th, 10 to 1 at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. That will be the Cannabis Control Commission coming out to Western Mass, Franklin County, and getting public comment on the regulations. And that's it for me. Okay, great. Concerns of the selectmen, do you have any? No. I'll get just a couple of short items. Um, the sewage problem's been taken care of here in the building? Yes. Um, we, uh, over this, before this weekend, a lot of work was done that uh, helped uh, some backup issues. There was a broken pipe that was identified and, uh, and fixed, and uh, yet there was still a noticeable odor in the building last week. So uh, our uh, town plumber, mm -hmm. uh, and his assistant set off a smoke bomb in the system mm. and identified that the vent was clogged. Um, uh, it was frozen for one thing, and it's been, it hasn't been above freezing for 12 days, so that was certainly um, contributing to the effect. Uh, and my bet is that there was some other clearing that, that had to happen as well. That is now cleared, and the odor has noticeably diminished. So we believe that it was a vent problem at this point, and that uh, that has been <coughs> taken care of uh, as well as it can for now. Okay. The other item I had, and I, I, I hadn't seen the building maintenance supervisor yet. Uh, I was in the firehouse side of the town garage this morning, the walk-in door part. You can't get in there because the door won't open. So you have to go through the overhead door to get to the fire trucks. You can't go in and walk into <coughs> a two-part situation and a push button lock assembly is froze or something so it won't work but even when you go inside and manually try to get out the door it's hanging up big time on the bottom of the door and I don't know that just started so I don't know if frost is pushed it on oh it could be a frosty so I, I have no yeah. idea if okay. you could get the supervisor to look at that sure and see if he can sure. get the lock fixed and, um, and, and specifically uh, the little walk out door on the firehouse side Watch all the engines, where the engines are. You have to look. Uh, is that to the front or to the side, side. of the building? To the side, side of the building. Side yeah. facing the clubhouse, the fireman's hall. Okay, wow. other than that, the next item is mail. We have a letter here from the Franklin County Selectmen's Association. Reminding us of the uh, upcoming meeting this Thursday at 5.30 at uh, GCC. Social hours at 5.30. You going to that by way? I'm not sure I know about it. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's a deadline to apply, apply to right now. i got to look at my scars see if I can make it turn. Okay. They're going to talk about. Um, oh, what's here? Oh, recognize it. Uh, talk about the regionalization in the county. What about, what what does regionalization mean? How can you save money with regionalization and stuff like that? It's good topics. And I have to say that as far as the state goes. Franklin County is the poster child for regionalization mm -hmm. um, because of a lot of work the, the Council of Governments has been doing, and you know, towns just just look to other that? towns to uh, to, 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 to work together. A lot of you know mutual aid agreements are 
are par for the course and towns lend equipment back and forth and that sort of thing. So. Okay, uh, before we go any further, do we have to uh, sign this caucus thing tonight? Uh, that is something you already did. Voted so, for so you Steve just signed that because okay. you already voted for it. That's good. Okay, any other announcements come in front of the board? No. Okay, if we hear no announcements, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.